Hey everybody, welcome to Local Business Hacks Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Case, and I'm on a mission to help you. Every week we're gonna be talking to local business owners and experts to get their best tips, tricks, and hacks to grow your business. This show's designed to teach you, inspire you, and motivate you to take massive action and start to build your future-proof business. Whether you're just starting off or you're taking your existing business to the next level, this episode is for you. So let's get started. Hey, local business hackers. I'm your host, director of global business development for Referizer, joined today by the president and founder of Liquid Vita, Sam Takata. Sam, welcome to Local Business Hacks. Oh, pleasure to be here. Thank you. Of course. I personally am super familiar with Liquid Vita and a little bit about your journey. Would love for you to take this opportunity to tell the world about you and what got you to this point in your career. Yeah, absolutely. So, Listen, I'm an immigrant from Dominican Republic that grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in the Midwest. Don't ask me how a Dominican ended up in Milwaukee. That's where my parents migrated to. And then eventually, senior year in high school, made my way down here to South Florida with my parents. And that's where all the fun began with my career. So finishing high school, became a firefighter paramedic. I went to school for that right after high school, a matter of fact. By the age of 19, I was already certified and licensed as a firefighter paramedic. Started working with the city of Oakland Park Fire Rescue in Broward County, Florida, and did many years out on the road, 12 years to be exact. I retired at the age of 32 after I got vested in the pension after 12 years. And the reason I retired is because the side hustle that I started was $500 in my back pocket, really blew up and became this company that today it's this multi-million dollar company that's selling franchises all throughout the United States. We're on the pharmacy side, distributing products to over 4,000 doctors. And this is part of my journey to success. That's amazing. Congratulations. And, and thank you for your service to my local community in South Florida. Sam, talk to me a little bit about Liquid Vita. What makes you different than all of the other quote unquote wellness spas that we see popping up globally? So yeah, so Liquid Vita, our focus is health, wellness, and beauty. So a lot of people in the industry, they typically offer about two of the different divisions that are out there. Two, it's usually about five different divisions that are out there. So Liquid Vita, we offer all five, which is the wellness side, which includes hormone optimization, the vitamin IV therapy, the blood work that we do. We have our medical weight loss division. That's another one out of the five. We have our aesthetics, which is the beauty, which co- includes some of the Botox, the fillers, the facials, the peels. Then we have our regenerative medicine side, which we utilize stem cell derived products, certain peptides to help recover from certain injuries. We work with a lot of professional athletes. We work with a lot of triathletes. And then last but not least, our sexual health division for both males and female, where we help try to correct the root cause of certain things like erectile dysfunction, urinary incontinence, things of that nature. Amazing. And the bet, what's the best way for people to go? Liquivita.com? Yeah, very easy. Liquivita.com. If you search for Liquivita on any of the social media platforms, which include LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, you'll find us. We have several locations throughout South Florida, many locations throughout the United States, Arizona, Texas, and New Jersey alongside with Connecticut, and we're expanding to many other states as we speak. Amazing. And for those of you listening, I can attest as a member of Liquid Vita for the last eight months, I'm a big fan. So definitely check it out. And if there's not a location near you, Sam would love to have a conversation about opening one near you. Absolutely. So transitioning right in, being in I would say preventative and the other side of medicine for almost your whole life would love to know what are some stories that shaped your toolkit of success that you love to teach to other entrepreneurs that come across your path? Yeah. I mean, so there's this one quote that uh, really hit me throughout my business journey, which is as an entrepreneur, you you really want to focus on being able to work on the business rather than in the business. Most of us entrepreneurs, what we do, we end up start working. We're wearing multiple hats, right? We're doing the marketing. We're uh, doing the financials. We're everything you can think of. And 
truly, there's a problem with that. You have to learn how to delegate. The power of delegating is extremely important. Learn how to put systems and processes in place so you can automate things and not be so uh, nailed and glued down to these type of things. And then that gives you the ability to actually work on the business rather than in the business and truly have good scalability. And, you know, that really clicked. And I started noticing it because when I first started the business, most business owners wear multiple hats. You're doing the marketing, you're doing whatever the technical skill is. If you own the landscaping business, you're cutting the grass. Me, I was actually doing the IVs. I was the guy, I would leave the fire department, go over to the the actual clinic, and I was the technician. I was starting the IVs, I was bedside manners with the patients, but this is the problem with that. What I was creating was a personality practice versus building a brand, right? So what happens with that? Every single person who wanted to come in wanted Sam. Fantastic feeling, but that's not what I want, right? I want to be able to scale. So what did I do so I could work on the business rather than work in the business? That's where I had to start focusing on delegating, the power of delegating, the power of putting systems and processes in place, automation training people, hiring people, so then I'm not stuck where people want Sam, Sam, Sam to do the actual job. So that was one of the biggest parts that really helped me remove multiple hats that we're wearing so I can work on the business rather than in the business. Amazing. And today, Liquid Vita can be found in how many locations across the U.S.? So we have 32 locations sold. More than half of those are actually open and operating. The other ones are in different stages of development. We're opening up new locations like every month or two months or so. And then obviously, we're still actively selling territory, selling more locations. My goal is to really get Liquid Vita out there to several different territories, help as many people with their health and wellness needs. That's amazing. So don't work in the business because then you can't scale like Sam's scaling. That's it's incredible. Right. Sam, are you a reader? You like to read? I do. I, I read. I, I like to listen to my books most of the time because I'm on the go, you know, when I'm driving or something, you know. What are some of your favorite audibles or, or books that you recommend to anybody in their journey? You know, How to Win Friends and Influence People is definitely number one. I started reading that thing when I was like, God, I, I want to say elementary school, probably like fifth or sixth grade. My uncle gave me that book. Think and Grow Rich oh, is another one. That one is most entrepreneurs read it. I, I kind of go through that same process that a lot of other inspiring entrepreneurs would end up asking people that have made it, hey, what are some books to read? And those are a lot of the books that I ended up reading throughout my success journey. Amazing. Sam, today... Working on the business, what are some of the roles that you're personally overseeing on your day-to-day as we look now? So, you know, as the CEO of the company, you're you're technically supposed to be overseeing the other chief roles in the organization, the C-level executives, which I do a lot of that. I'd say besides overseeing the different C-level executives from the chief finance officer, the chief marketing officer, the chief legal counsel, chief medical officer, I think where I dabble into where it's not necessarily where I should be, where where I'm kind of putting my feet, you know, boots on the ground is marketing. Because truly, when you start looking at marketing, it's so important, man. It, It doesn't matter what business you're in, you're a marketer first, so you need to focus on marketing and public relations. So I dive deep into that. I dive deep into the different systems and softwares we use that are connected to marketing, meaning the CRM systems. Data is everything. So I'm a data kind of guy. So sometimes it feels like I'm micro, micromanaging a bit, and, and I try to avoid that at all costs. But truly, you got to know what's going on the marketing and PR side, because that's how you scale your business. We're all in sales, whether we want to be or not. It's wild. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sam, speaking on marketing, talk to me about offers. Offers are something that everybody either thrives or struggles against. I got in the Liquid Vita system. It was pretty easy for me, but I'd love to hear from you. What are some of your hero offers that have really helped to scale the brand to where you are today? Yeah. So when you start thinking about offers, one of the things that I started strategizing on quite a bit because there's all kinds of offers that that you can put out there as promotions. For me, what's more going towards the membership side, 
Now, our business is a little unique. We, we offer a magnitude of different services and modalities. So we offer more than just one membership. And, and that's something that most business owners need to think about is it's not just necessarily offering one membership. Sometimes you got to offer different tiers to fit that person's need. So at Lincoln Vita, we offer different types of memberships. We do live in a subscription-based community. So a lot of people want to feel like they're part of something. They want to feel like it's a, a club, something where they can utilize in multiple different locations. And that's where we decided to actually create certain memberships, which include different divisions of the business where you could utilize it for facials. You could use it for IV drips. You could utilize it for really anything. That's awesome. I'll never forget my third time at Liquid Vita in Palm Beach Gardens. I walked in and I saw three of my friends getting an IV and I was like, you go here too? And it was so funny because they're by far my healthiest friends. So I should have assumed, but... Um, yeah, believe it or not, you know, with Liquid Vita, we even get the group of women, like the housewives, right? Where they actually contract us to do more of the concierge service where we go to their homes or hotels. And they all get together. They're having a little champagne. They do the Botox parties. They're all getting injected. But they make it into this fun event, you know? And that's something to think about as well, too, with whatever business you have. Doing little events where you bring groups of people together. It's not only the multi-level marketing companies that can bring little groups together, right, to try to sell people. You, know, you can really do it with any kind of uh, business that you participate in. 100%. Um, so speaking of that, when we talk about partnerships play a massive role in every business today, especially as we partner with big, big brands like Liquivita and, and some of your providers, what have been some of the most valuable partnerships that you've had and how have those really aided in the growth of your business? Well, you know, when you talk about partnerships, it really comes down to relationships. I did a really strong TED talk on relationships. And it goes into the different importance of relationships that you build in business, not just with your business partners, but also your vendors, your customers, your employees. And these are all relationships that you have to nurture, you have to foster and cultivate, which sometimes they grow into bigger relationships. Some of those relationships when we're talking about with employees is building trust, making sure your employees trust you, make sure you can trust them. And the only way to do that is to actually have good, strong communications with your employees, your vendors. You know, your vendors can be there to help you. I mean, during COVID, I'll tell you, if we didn't have strong relationships with our, with our vendors through COVID, I mean, th these vendors, they tried to figure out everything they can do possible so we could keep our doors open. Because they, they, the last thing they want is for businesses to go out of business and then they lose all their accounts. So when we talk about actual partnerships with like business partners, those, those are things that you want to have more of a proactive approach to that relationship versus reactive. And what I mean by that is with your business partners, you should have such a strong personal relationship where you know them on a personal level where like you can literally just go out with them every single week and go have a few cocktails if you want. So very important relationships to me is everything when it comes to the business. And they even lead, I, I tell you, I've had relationships with customers that have actually transformed into business mentors of mine. It's amazing. Friends first. Yeah, that's true. People, people first too. I'll remind our listeners of one of the greatest hacks that was told on our podcast. And it was a, a franchisor saying that I know who my top franchisees are based on if they know all of their employees' names, spouses' names, and children's names, I can guarantee you that that is a top performing store because of the relationships that the franchisee had with their staff. And that was really, really powerful. So uh, just to piggyback off of what you said, yeah. Sam, speaking on relationships, obviously the franchisees that you award locations to could be the make or break of the brand as these are not corporately managed locations. What are some of your tips or things that you look out for when awarding a franchisee outside of the financial and the things that we can read and see on paper? Yeah. So when it comes to potential franchisees, I actually say no to more potential franchisees than yes. 
because they have to be a fit. They have to be a cult cultural fit into the company. You know, the franchisees we're looking for, we're not just looking for someone to throw money at it, right? We're looking for people who are actually going to work, who are going to be boots on the ground. They're going to go ahead and, and really nurture that location and build those relationships with the customers. So if, if we get a franchisee who's just looking to put the money into it, hiring a manager or something like that, that doesn't work for us. We need that franchisee who's going to be there every single day, working with the team, building up the team, understanding the business, but not just understanding the business, but alongside with that, actually living the liquid Vita way. And what we call, what that is, is living the liquid Vita journey, the Vita journey, right? So the Vita journey is someone who participates in those five divisions that we talked about earlier. And hopefully they'll be around forever or at least a long time by investing in their health and wellness. We hope. Only God <laughs> knows how long they'll be around. <laughs> Amen. Sam, talk to me about how to manage the relationships or some of your tips when managing relationships, either with your employees, your staff members, or just partners in the business. So managing those relationships, they're all a little bit different. Well, when you manage the relationships with employees, us as an organization, we have an HR department, right? So part of that, it's not just having an HR department because anyone can say, hey, we have an HR department, but it's having unique, different services, programs for those employees. Your employees are one of the biggest assets of your company. So you have to treat it as so. So if they're one of your biggest assets of your company, do certain things so they feel like it. Offer a EAP, an employee assistance program. God forbid they have certain problems at home, off-site from business. You can help them with that, right? Mental health is extremely important in today's workforce. You know, building other relationships with them, getting them to actually become the best version of themselves in your business by sending them to educational programs for them to actually understand and learn some of the new stuff that's happening in the industry. That is the way how to actually get those employees to develop into greater personnel within, within your business. Beautiful. Beautiful. Amazing. Sam, before we wrap up, I'm going to ask you my favorite question. Oh boy. And that's, if you were going to have dinner with a historical figure from the past, who would it be? What are you talking about? And what are you eating at this table? Oh, what am I eating? Man, I really eat anything. So bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a nice steak, definitely. If there was someone that I was talking to from the past, would be Frank Lloyd Wright. I'm not sure if you're familiar who Frank Lloyd Wright is. He's an architect, and he designed a lot of beautiful, beautiful architecture in Wisconsin, a matter of fact, that was just way ahead of his time. It was just like, so both my parents are architects. My uncle that brought us here to the United States, he's an architect. So they've all had a lot of connections with Lloyd Wright and a lot of books that I grew up that I would always read about it. And, and I'm, I'm always thinking about modern business and I'm always into the unique stuff. And, I mean, I, I would just love to actually understand what was going on in his head when he came up and designed these certain things. And there was this beautiful Greek church. They would do every summer, they'd do the Greek festival in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And this beautiful, I don't know if you've ever seen this Greek church. You're going to have to Google it if you haven't. But it's a dome church and it's out of this world. But it's been like that before I was even born. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think it's incredible anytime that we can meet or fantasize about meeting somebody that was really doing something crazy very different than we're used to. And what pushes them to that edge to say, I'm going to do it is, is that sauce that we yeah, all for want. Me, it's, it's talking to an individual that has created true history. You know, when you're talking about someone historic, this is historic stuff here. You know, that's not going away. I mean, that was built before we were alive and it's going to be there past the time that we actually pass away. You know, this, this is, you know, these are the individuals that you really want to meet with. It's amazing. Sam, I can't thank you enough. What's the best way for people to stay connected with you? So pretty straightforward. You can go on the Liquid website. That's liquidvita.com. You can find me on my social media platforms. Instagram is Sammy, S-A-M-M-Y underscore Tejada, T-E-J-A-D-A. 
or you can just shoot me an email at sam at liquidvita.com. Amazing. Sam, we over here at RefRiser are so excited for your growth. I can't wait to see Liquivitas all over the world, everywhere I travel so I can get my post, post airplane drip and my pre airplane drip, which has saved me in, gosh, I think I've been on 150 flights in the last year. And I'm thankful to IVs for that and for what you've created. And we look forward to continuing to follow you. Congrats. Awesome. Sounds good, Carl. It was a pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to head over to our site, local-business-hacks.com to check out the show notes and send me questions or ideas for future episodes. If you want to grow your business, just like the people you've heard from here, follow Local Business Hacks podcast and tune in for new tips, tricks, and tactics. Until next time, thanks for listening and keep hacking.